Hello, Bob here for the old Iron Lover channel. Welcome back. Um, in a recent video about a Maytag bearing puller, uh, when I created that tool, I ran into a problem partway through it. I was going to thread a rod with a die, and I didn't have a die stock for that big a die. I don't know where the die came from, but I needed to use it. So uh, today's video is making the die stock. So I, uh, I lopped off a piece of two and a half inch diced, or, uh, uh, round stock, uh, about an inch long, faced out one end, and I've started boring it, uh, drilled as deep as I could or as wide as I could with my drill bits, and then uh, started using a smaller uh, boring bar to get it out to where I can get a hold of it with a bigger boring bar. So here's the, uh, the die stock I'm going to use, and I want to get make sure that the, the lip on the inside of this uh, stops a little short so it clears all these chip holes here, the chip clearance holes. And I, it looks to me like a quarter inch inside would be fine, which would mean a half inch diameter smaller. And uh, I'm going to, so I'm going to turn this to an inch and a half, which will take us right to the edge of here. And then I'll come back and the uh, the depth of the thickness of the thing's uh, 625. I'll go in 625 out to 2 inches diameter and uh, then I'll drill it for a screw to go in here and uh, drill in way however, drill in well, drill in solder, or drill in something, uh, some big handles on it. So anyway, um, that's the plan. Let's see how far we are from inch and a half now. We're at 393, 1.393. So I need to take at least a hundred thousandths on the diameter out, and then some. So I'm going to take 25. Let's try taking a 50 thousandths cut first, which if you just, that'll just rip everything out. I need to rip out all at once. Four sixty-four. So that's thirty-four, thirty-six left to go. Eighteen on a side. So let's take let's take ten and a spring cut and see what that makes us. One four eighty eight. So you got to take twelve thousandths more off. So I'm going to uh, take it all, take it all in one pass plus a spring cut. Ninety nine and a half. So the next thing I'm going to do is set up a travel dial and uh, get ourselves set up for 625 depth and uh, cut this out to two inches. Okay, we've got the, uh, the smaller bore in here. Now the next thing is to bring the, this half of the bore out to two inches to clear the, uh, the die and in five-eighths of an inch. And then we can do some cleanup on it and we'll start drilling holes in the outside. So we are at an inch and a half and we need to be at two inches so we need to come out 250 thousandths on a side. <laughs>
we should be about a hundred short, if I remember right. In 1.890. So I'm going to come out 25 thousandths. One nine four one. So I'm going to be at 59 more. So take another 25 cut and then we'll start sneaking up on it. One nine eight eight. Take a spring cut on it. Before we go too far. I'll stop at about 10,000 shallow. One nine nine five. Two and a half thousandths or so. Depending on where we measure, we're right on or we're a little under. Let's see how the die fits. And because it's an adjustable die, we want to leave ourselves just a little extra room. But that, that's, that's flaming perfect. So I'm going to run in and take that extra ten thousandths because I think we're sticking out that far. Yeah, we're sticking out just a shade. Perfect. Yeah, this is a little bit thick and it needs to be uh, deburred and things too, so I'm gonna get it all nice looking before I quit. Okay, I used the DRO and uh, split the difference between this side and this side, and then I touched off this side, moved in my uh, 100 thousandths, that is the radius of the edge finder, and then I moved in another 187 and a half thousandths, which should put me in the middle of the, uh, the 5 eighths inch uh, part of the bore that the actual uh, uh, die is going to fit in. 3125, that's perfect. Okay, now I'm centered between the two sides and I'm uh, 5 sixteenths instead because the, the, the whole depth of the bore is 5 eighths and I want to be halfway in there. So anyway, I'm going to put a, uh, a flat on there uh, to give the drill a place to run, and then I'm going to poke a hole and tap it. drill, which is the tap size for a 5 16 national course. Slow it way down. Usually it will slip in the jaws if I don't put them in too tight rather than 
snag the tap. So, okay, that's the uh, finished product as far as the the die holder itself. Now I got to get the handles on it. Okay, the last step as far as the machining goes is to machine a couple little shallow sockets that I can uh, seat the end of the of the handle in and then that'll get me spotted. All I have to do then is make sure it's it's uh, perpendicular to the so that the handles line up with each other and then I'll uh, braise them in place. So I'm going a, an eighth of an inch deep after I touch off. <coughs> about there. It's a two flute end mill, so it uh, is a center cutting end mill. Okay, last step to braise those pieces together. And the sockets actually hold it fairly well. Got it lined up, got it propped up on a appropriate size drill bits to get the handles even. Well, thanks for watching, and I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. And uh, if you enjoyed it, uh, give me a thumbs up. If you feel like subscribing, that's always welcome. And uh, until we get another video ready for you, happy trails.